We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise his presence with us. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship him together. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our prayers, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hello and welcome to this week's online service. My name is Janet. It's wonderful to have you with us. Now, you've probably heard by now, but the Rossendale Team Ministry is now official. Woohoo! This is brilliant, brilliant news. This means the nine Anglican churches across Rossendale are now working together in one team. This is going to give us some fabulous opportunities to learn from one another, to grow together, to serve Jesus all across this valley in new and exciting ways. It's fabulous. And to celebrate, we're having a launch service, a launch celebration service on February the 6th, 3 o'clock at St Mary Rottenstall. Bishop Mark Ashcroft is going to be with us. He's going to help us celebrate. And if you can, please come and join us. It will be so go, so good to get together as we start this exciting new bit of our journey here in the valley. So let's begin our worship and sing. Let's sing. Let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. saw the city and wept over it because it did not recognise the time of God's coming. 
we confess our part in the self-centeredness, blindness and sin of the life of our community. Join with me as we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in that blessed forgiveness we share in God's peace. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the Spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We're now going to have our reading, which is taken from John chapter 21, beginning at verse 15. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. We've just heard a passage from the last chapter of John's Gospel. We join Simon Peter as he talks to Jesus. This is after the resurrection. Peter has seen Jesus arrested, tortured and killed. And yet here he is. This is one of my favourite passages of scripture. It radiates love, the grace and compassion of Jesus. Just before verse 15, where we began today, Peter and some of the other disciples have decided to go fishing. Maybe he needed a bit of the familiar to balance against the extraordinary. I mean, he has just experienced his friend rising from the dead after all. But they have no luck, no fish. Jesus appears on the shore. They don't recognise him. But he shouts, cast your nets to the right. They do. And suddenly the nets can't contain the amount of fish. Peter knows then who it is on the shore. And he jumps out of the boat, putting on some clothes first. Always good. And he rushes to meet Jesus. Jesus has a fire going, ready to cook some of the fish that they've caught. And after they have eaten, Jesus talks to Peter. Three times, Jesus asks, do you love me? Each time, Peter says, of course I do. Each time, Jesus gives Peter an instruction. Feed my lambs. Tend my sheep. Feed my sheep. And in verse 19, we hear Jesus say, follow me. Follow me. Remember Peter, who vowed never to leave Jesus, betrayed and disowned him. Three times Peter denied knowing Jesus to save his own skin. And here we see Jesus' grace, his immeasurable love. Jesus shows Peter he is forgiven. Three times Peter denied Jesus. Three times he's given the chance to reaffirm his love for Jesus. But Jesus doesn't just pat him on the shoulder and go, "Okay, we're okay then, we're eat. Jesus gives Peter a job. You say you love me? Okay. This is what you need to do. You need to love those I love. You need to look after them. You need to care for them. 
Jesus is sharing his ministry with Peter. In chapter 20, verse 21, we hear Jesus tell his disciples, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Follow me. I send you. Peter, the disciples, us, we are all tasked with continuing the ministry Jesus started. Whether we are lay or ordained, working, retired, at school or college, able to attend church or not, we are all tasked with looking after and caring for those that Jesus loves. Whether that's providing hospitality, making a brew for folk, keeping in touch with others, helping with technology, serving as a volunteer in a community group, helping to lead services, leading our musical worship, guiding our children, walking alongside young people, being a prayer warrior. Whatever it is we do, and whether it is seen by dozens of people or by just one, we are looking after and caring for those that Jesus loves. Each and every day, we are given the chance to respond to Jesus. Follow me. Last week, Derek and Leela both spoke about Paul's image of us being in the body of Christ in church and Derek online. They spoke about us all having different skills and talents. And when we heed the call to follow Jesus, the ways in which we each serve him will look different. We are each very different with different skills after all. Jesus needs us all to serve him how we can. Each and every aspect of what we offer him will be one of the utmost importance in the care of his people. No one has nothing to offer. No one cannot continue the ministry Jesus started. And as we begin this new year, we'll be spending time looking as a church how we move forward in this community, in this place at this time. And as part of that, I'd love us all to pray, to reflect on the gifts God has given us and consider what do we offer to serve him in this place. And if you'd like to chat through anything that comes from your reflections and prayers, please get in touch. In a second, we're going to watch a couple of videos from the Church of England's Everyday Faith Project. And this is a great way to explore how we can all live out our faith in Jesus in lots of different ways. I've put the link underneath the video if you'd like to check it out more. The examples in the video speak about how people's love of Jesus, their willingness to serve his people is played out in bits of their lives, in parts of their lives. But remember, their stories are theirs. Ours will be different. Jesus is saying, follow me to us all. What we need to reflect on is what does that look like for me? Amen. The one about Victoria's secret. What difference does being a Christian bring in our daily lives? in the everyday things we do at home, school or work. For Victoria, an apprentice hairdresser in a busy salon, this everyday faith question is around washing hair. What difference does being a Christian make to the way you might apply conditioner? The difference is that Victoria prays. She prays as she massages in the conditioner, around things clients might have said or simply to ask for God's blessing. The one about number 10. What helps us to see how God is at work in our everyday lives? Take Mike, an armed protection officer at number 10. Asked how God might be in the things he is good at, Mike told a group at his church that at his work, the tension sometimes means there's quite a lot of conflict. Mike has found that he's pretty good at bringing people back together. Blessed are the peacemakers, Mike, someone offered. Maybe you're part of God's ministry of reconciliation. Mike knew he was doing something good, but hadn't thought that God might be doing something as well, until now.
find out how you are part of God's ministry of reconciliation with everyday faith from the Church of England. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I know we come to a time of prayer. It's going to be slightly different today. There'll be the collect to begin with, which is the special prayer for today. And then we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. And then I'm going to show you another video from the Everyday Faith Project. And this one shows a prayer technique called the examine. And I thought this would be useful for us to maybe see and think, can we use this in our prayer lives as we begin to reflect on that call from Jesus to follow him and to realise what it means for us when he says, I send you. So let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
thank you so much for being with us today. I'd love to hear more about your reflections, about how you feel you're answering that call to follow me. If you'd like a chat, please get in touch. And I've also put the link below, remember, for the Everyday Faith Project from the Church of England. Go and check it out. There's some really good resources on there. But our final song, we're going to sing Tell Out My Soul. Tell out my soul The greatness of the Lord Unnumbered blessings Give my spirit voice tender to me The promise of His word In God my Saviour Shall my heart rejoice Join with me in saying, God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you now and always. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. <laughs>